So within GE Ventures Healthcare, there are broadly speaking three pillars we are interested in. The first one is uh, something we call affordable medical procedures. So that uh, has anything to do with uh, either patient monitoring or minimally invasive procedures. Uh, the second pillar is uh, something we call precision medicine, and that is in vitro diagnostics as well as life science enabling tools. And the third pillar, which is a broad pillar, is digital health. So this, has, uh, this spans a wide spectrum of areas uh, ranging from remote monitoring uh, via sensors um, all the way to consumer devices and wearables. So I wouldn't say it's over hype per se, it's more momentum. That's what I would classify that. And uh, what I would put in that category is the whole space of wearables, right? And wearables can range anything fr um, from consumer wearables all the way to something that's actually clinically available and in the hospital, right? And the reason I would say it's getting a lot of momentum is we're still trying to figure out which vital signs uh, patients care about, which vital signs uh, doctors care about, how to provide that continuum of care to the doctors and to the patients, how do we provide meaningful insights from that data? Because currently we have a slew of monitoring devices that we wear on a daily basis. We, we don't necessarily have as clear of a picture of how to derive insights from that data. If you look at the cost of sequencing, uh, next-gen sequencing has reduced the cost of sequencing dramatically. And while we're not directly playing in the sequencing space, where we are playing is in the sample prep and the life science tool space. And uh, this area, we've had some very successful exits in this area, very, very successful IPOs of com companies li um, like um, uh, Nanostring. Um, and uh, it, this is an area which historically has gotten um, less attention. However, I think there's a lot of money to be made. We recently invested in a very promising company called Raindance Technologies. And uh, there's a lot of money to be made, um, but it just doesn't necessarily get on everyone's radar, so to speak. Broadly speaking, the advice we like to give entrepreneurs in terms of when they, it, what, what they should be looking at when they're forming their company is um, think about disrupting healthcare along three metrics, right? Uh, how do you disrupt it from an affordability perspective? How do you disrupt it from an access perspective? Um, and how do you disrupt it from a quality perspective, right? So if you think about your technology and how you use it in healthcare, make sure it's hitting at least one of these targets, if not uh, more. Having too broad of an identity of your company, right? And that always sets up red flags for us is uh, specifically in the digital health space, we see a lot of companies coming in and saying they have a proven technology that works, um, and they say they want to be a consumer company first, and then in the longer term, they want to be a clinical company. Uh, and, and it's tough being both, just because it's completely different business models, completely different focus and commercial models and skill sets that you need. Um, and so the advice I would give entrepreneurs is make sure you have your identity and a specific identity, right? If you want to be a consumer company, go, go down that path and figure that out. And once you prove it successful, then you can always think about a clinical path. But uh, by the nature of a startup, you are uh, cash constrained, you're resource constrained, so don't try to spread yourself too thin. Team is one of the things we, we look at very closely and it's one of our biggest uh, investment criteria that we like to check. Um, we, we are looking for an experienced team and as well as a well-rounded team. Um, we come across a lot of teams these days that uh, want to make an impact in healthcare but don't necessarily have a ton of experience in healthcare from their prior lives. And so what, what I would advise entrepreneurs is to make sure you pay a lot of attention to your teams in rounding out the skill set, right? So in, in digital health, you definitely need programming and coding skills, but make sure you round that out very, very, very specifically with some healthcare skills, somebody who has um, direct experience with payers and providers and consumer models. 
fail fast and frugally and learn how to pivot, right? So uh, make sure you, as you think about your roadmap, you break it up into steps and you think about capital efficiency along those steps, right? So create uh, proof points where you can decide whether your technology works and whether you should change the direction. Um, and the sooner you do that, the you can get to, get to that conclusion with less capital and make, it, make your company more capital efficient. Think about uh, creating an innovation ecosystem, right, uh, for yourself, right? And by that, what I mean is, don't necessarily think about uh, only approaching VCs when you need capital, right? Uh, think about having academic institutions as your partners and advisors. Uh, think about speaking to a lot of providers, a lot of pairs. Uh, and that's how uh, GE likes to think about innovation. We like to create an innovation ecosystem because the healthcare space is really a partnership of all these different parties. Um, and you cannot be successful in disrupting healthcare if you're very focused on talking to one aspect. So make sure when you are thinking about your startup, uh, make sure you talk to a lot of people and get them on board as your partners, as your advisors, and potentially as investors when your company is further down the road. Um, and, and that will, I think, set a very successful strategy for your company longer term.